So how would we implement this, this uh, in, in a process? So we're going to talk about the data request process. This is one element. You might also have data quality issues. You might have, um, you know, just general data definitions that, that need to be done or, or, or other sort of content changes. So for us, when we talk about the data request process, we're really talking about someone who wants a new report, a new extract, a new integration, you know, or a change to one of those existing things. And, and typically many organizations have some sort of way to intake these requests and, and document what they, what they need. Either it's very informal, like, you know, over the phone and the email, or it may be slightly more formal through a ticketing system, or they may actually have like web forums where people fill in what they want or word documents or things like that, or even a full on like requirements of specification tool um, like we have in, in, in the cookbook. But either way, when someone is, is, is putting in a, a request for these new deliverables, uh, rather than just going like straight from the requester to the developer to, you know, uh, production, <laughs> You know, figure out where to insert the governance uh, and the framework of data governance and the steward's uh, subject matter expertise in that in that process. Um, so, you know, for quickly understanding the, the actions in a data request, there's sort of someone who's coming in and, and is requesting a bit of information. They're going to search for existing report or extract uh, and maybe uh, research the details for self-service reporting, like they're thinking they want to build something themselves or that or does something already exist. Uh, they might then come and ask questions and that might get routed to the data steward to answer, oh yeah, there is a report like that, or oh no, we, that exists, but it's not yet in the knowledge base and let me help you with that, or, or I can help you uh, to figure out how to build that report, maybe, maybe help you with some definitions, you know, whatever, that, that might be an information request. But if, if, if that doesn't turn out so they can do self-service or find something that's existing, they then may submit a data request for a new report or extract or change or update to one, or maybe they want something run and extracted. Or schedule some we call these the data requests and they ultimately end up having a specification created um, so as i just mentioned this is the, the critically important part in governance because all the interesting organizational knowledge about what and how your report data is decided uh what your report data is is decided every time a data request is processed so um you know be it the report developer who's doing it or stewards or, or whatever so the really one thing is how are you managing this process? How are you capturing the know-how that's generated from building new reports, uh, getting the requirements and specifications, and are the data stewards involved for either subject matter expertise and guidance or review and approval to make sure that what that you know developer or that um, report writer has created or that intern has created is uh, it matches you know what your what your, your quality is. So being able to sort of reference your existing catalog of information and your uh, knowledge base and if things aren't there and approved to be able to interact with the steward to get the information that you need uh, for anything that new that's generated. Um, so you have a standard process for that. And then, you know, if you're doing that, it's going to create the trust and the use of the data by having that, you know, all of the sort of pieces get documented and, and, and build upon each other in a centralized knowledge base over time. Um, one way to do that is to have a data request template. You know, sort of different templates for different types of requests is, is helpful. You know, you may already have this. Uh, you know, the key for this point is, you know, you, it, it, if you're intaking requests in a, in a somewhat formal way, that you can um, take those templates and include designations to drive the routing of the appropriate, appropriate data stewards. My uh, automation is out of order here. But having functional areas and data systems and other attributes that can drive towards this, what steward is involved, right? So otherwise, if you're just taking a phone call from someone that says, I need a report about, you know, retention rate for my students, uh, with X, Y, and Z, uh, you know, you, and you, you're not sort of classifying like what area is that in and what system is that in and, and, and how does that get routed? Uh, you know, it's tough to interact with the appropriate steward, right? Um, the other thing that's cool about having a template where you're capturing this information in a spec is that it can generate other content. So the, the general sort of, hey, I'm going to document a new report that someone needs. In the building of that, you may end up having to create new definitions because the de a definition for retention rate or you know, active student or, or, or whatever doesn't exist. So you have to go add those, those definitions and those get also routed to stewards or new reference data or data quality rules or, or whatever. So it's, it's a good way to generate out more content uh, and, and continually building your, what's in your knowledge base. Uh, so, you know, each data request can, you know, you're going to build documentation every day deliverables. You're going to have new functional technical definitions, potentially new quality rules or issues, new reference data lists. Uh, and it may be new things, a new data system that's documented. Oh, if there's a new data warehouse that we didn't know about, we're going to add that or a new data, um, operational data store or something. 
Um, so each extended piece of content can then get routed to other data stewards. So if even if you're writing an HR payroll report, maybe included in that is a selection criteria that that is trying to figure out, you know, whether someone is an active employee and what employee class they have. Uh, and that may not be something that the HR payroll data steward is an expert on. That might have to be defined by going to a separate data steward who focuses on, you know, general employment statuses or something in a slightly different area. Uh, and, and that's fine if those get routed. So, you know, the steward role here is, you know, to provide that subject matter expertise, the functional guidance, the technical guidance, uh, or directing the requester or creator towards existing or similar content, right? If something doesn't exist to say, well, wait, you know, it's, a, it's a, actually a really valuable thing for the expertise to say that, you know, that doesn't, that's not documented here, but there's something very similar that you should go use that and maybe we can tweak that. Uh, review and approval of the specification, uh, reviewing, editing, approval of new definitions of content and adding maybe security or privacy review and classification over the things you're getting published. Like, oh no, that, you can't create a report that you send out that has a security number on it or, or a salary or whatever. So here's, you know, a little example of how you might do this routing and, and whatever tool that, that you want. So you're the requester, here's Connie, she's saying, hey, I want this HR payroll report. I want it out of the uh, HRIS warehouse and I, I want it in Tableau. So these three things, what the functional area is, what data system, what type of content it is, so it's gonna go through that matrix, right? Either a simple matrix that, oh, like, you know, who's the data stewards for HR or more, you know, detailed ones. Um, and that's gonna decide, oh, well, that's, you know, Marcy and Deb are the stewards, the functional steward and the technical steward or they're both members of the one steward role. Uh, and, and so that's knows how to, you know how to route to them because you've got a matrix there. Um, as they do things, they may, they may choose to just then assign that to a, or, or someone, you know, they will ultimately get assigned to a report writer. That report writer might then go back and interact with them throughout the process and ultimately share that back to the requester. Um, so, you know, again, there's lots of ways to implement this technically with various tool sets, data cookbook being one of them, but you ultimately need to decide like, you know, what roles equate to what content and what, what actions. And then that's what will sort of filter the, those processes through. But it's important to capture the key areas, like what areas is in, what data system is it in, what type of content is this that they're, that they're doing. Um, so pragmatically, if you don't have a data cookbook, if you don't have a, a, a fancy workflow system, if you're not using a, a ticketing system that you've configured for this specific activity, I, I recommend like starting with what the first step process is. So just having a directory of who the data stewards are for certain things. If, so if I'm working on something, I can call up and ask. Uh, so again, you know, this is sort of the sticky note approach to things, um, which is important. 